to call the tonight's meeting here to order. Um, for what are we on here? February third, twenty sixteen. Uh, having done that, uh, if I could please remind everyone to turn off your cell phone if you do have one, please, so that it doesn't disrupt the video. And if I would ask everyone to join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please, John? Sure. Filkins. Here. Tamplin. Here. Sicto. Here. Greg. Here. Fent. Here. Hutton. Here. Have a quorum. Wonderful. Uh, tonight, first thing, approval of the December 28, 2015 uh, meeting minutes. Entertain a motion for that, I please. Have a motion. I second it. Uh, Ms. Falcon slash what? Randy. <laughs> what's his name? Uh, yeah, what's his name? Champlin. <laughs> Roll call, please. It's been so long since we met, I forget. Greg. Yes. Sicto. Yes. Champlin. Yes. Fent. Yes. Filkins. Yes. Hutton. Yes. Next, I just need an approval for this evening's agenda, again for February 3rd, 2016. Please. I move we approve the agenda. Mr. Schichtel. Second. Seconded by Mr. Champlin. Fent. Yes. Filkins. Yes. Champlin. Yes. Schichtel. Yes. Greg. Yes. Hudson. Yes. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. uh, under old business, um, 311 Russell Street deed is registered. No further action needed. Any other comments, sir, on that? A simple update. Uh, Perfect. It, it took a, a little bit of time to, to get through the recording of the paper, okay. but... Not only is the recording done now, but the fence has been removed, it's my understanding. Oh, so. wow. Perfect. Complied. Excellent. Uh, under new business this evening, uh, we are all here to set a public hearing date for the rezoning application for the Terry D. property, preferably February 22nd, uh, 2016, which would be our normal meeting night. Uh, an application for the rezoning to a mixed-use planned unit development zoning district and submittal of a sketch plan. Having read that, I'll let Mr. Wallace bring us up to speed. Um, yes, we uh, had a preliminary meeting with the developer and uh, their interest is in pursuing the rezoning and uh, we had a meeting with the purpose of trying to um, make sure we were all on the same page with what uh, the requirements would be for the sketch plan submittal uh, items, mm -hmm. uh, recognizing that all the individual sites will have to come back uh, before the Planning Commission is an actual site plan approval, but we wanted to make sure that all the road right-of-ways, the topography, the storm drainage, uh, what was going to be public and private roads, that all those different issues were going to be addressed, that the uh, landscape buffers and so forth would be addressed. So uh, we had a productive meeting, and I think we're all on the same page now, and they've now submitted the plans. And, um, of course, because the way the ordinance is written, there's always some options, you know, if the Planning Commission wants to take something one way or another, there's room for some movement one way or the other, but we feel that the plan that they've submitted is in a, uh, a form that uh, we anticipated is what it would look like uh, at the sketch plan level. So um, now we would just move forward and uh, have that uh, public hearing at the next meeting, and then if things go well at that meeting, if possibly it's approved, or if you think other work needs to be done, you could decide at that time whether any modifications need to be made. Okay. Anyone have any questions for John before we open this up to set this date? 
<coughs> when will we get copies of the site plan sketch? Uh, probably tomorrow. Cool. Good. Excited to see it. Because I'm sure there will be some things to digest. Okay. Any other questions for John? Okay. To entertain a motion then to go ahead and set this date. So moved. Support. Mr. Greg and Ms. Stilkins. Do you need any verbiage or just that it's for February 22nd, sir? Uh, just that it's uh, for the purpose of a public hearing for the rezoning of the uh, Cadillac Junction Terry D. Yep. project uh, and uh, for the rezoning to the mixed-use PUD district and for the sketch plan submittal. Right, Dave? Perfect. That's right. what he said. He said. Well, sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it in the okay. mix that way. <laughs> Roll, please. Schichtel. Yes. Fent. Yes. Filkins. Yes. Champlin. Yes. Greg. Yes. Putvin. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, next on our list, there is a discussion on recent marijuana legislation under consideration. There's a proposed petition and impl implications for future zoning regulations. Having read that, I, our young lady might be doing this. I don't know. I don't see anyone in the audience doing stuff. But let, let me just give you a little backdrop. Yes, uh, please. Uh, Marcus uh, Pesha, city manager, and myself met with Don Koschmeider, and uh, he was the one that provided us with the information that's in your packets uh, relative to the uh, petition that they were thinking of circulating and then also some of their ideas on where... Uh, what district uh, these facilities might be located. And uh, we uh, listened to Mr. Kosmeyer and he, he inquired whether he could have an opportunity to come before this board and, you know, kind of give a background of what their objectives are, what they're trying to do. Uh, he was set to be on the agenda last meeting, which we didn't have a quorum for. Uh, I spoke with him last week, this past week, and he was going to have another gentleman address the board, but I don't see anybody here for that purpose. Uh, but that being the case, we thought it was important that you get legal counsel on where things stand at the state level or fed level on marijuana legislation and when the appropriate time might be to start actually uh, considering any kind of... Uh, changes or new ordinance creation in this regard. So with that, I'll turn it over to Laura and let her brief you on where things stand at the state level and Fed level. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as you know, this is an issue that's been a hot topic for some years and something that we have followed the developments on closely. And it's also important to note, as John said, there's nothing currently pending uh, before you and there has been no petition to initiate legislation. It's in a more exploratory stage, so you're not at a place where you have to make a decision. So at this point, this is more for education and background. Um, um, we don't know exactly what would be proposed if there were a petition, but if it were something that was a dispensary, a dispensary being a, a, basically a commercial place where you go to buy medical marijuana, where you've got a business selling medical marijuana. Those are not expressly allowed under the current Michigan Medical Marijuana Act. And uh, a recent uh, Supreme Court, Michigan Supreme Court case said that they were not covered, not lawful, under the Act. So there is legislation pending in the Michigan legislature, and it is uh, gone before the House, but is still in committee right now in the Senate, is House Bill number 4209, that would allow for different kinds of facilities, including uh, growers and, um, and dispensaries, but importantly, even if that bill were to pass, which is certainly not a given, these bills have been proposed several times over the last several years and have not passed, but if it were, the current language has an opt-out for municipalities. So even if it is allowed in the state, you don't have to allow dispensaries in your community. You can allow them and you can, of course, regulate the location and hours of operation and things like that, depending on how the final law is written. But the current bill that's out there vests a lot of local control, which 
is obviously important for you to know. Um, so in terms of how the city will address a uh, citizen-initiated you know, petition, if one comes before you, we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. But for right now, our recommendation is to hold off on initiating any legislation on your own that regulates medical marijuana because the landscape is so uncertain. Um, there is this legislation pending that could have a huge impact on it, so you could do a lot of work and craft a lot of regulations and then have them be swept away by a new state law. And there's even the possibility that <coughs> recreational marijuana use could be legal at some point which would again completely change the landscape and you don't want to put a lot of work into something or allow something that a court might say is illegal and then a new law might come along, it's changing very rapidly. So we are monitoring those changes and have been for some time and believe at this point uh, it's probably wise to defer any action on the issue until we have a better idea of where Michigan's going to land on the issue. Okay. Um, as far as what I felt was in our packets, all I really see that was here was just definitions, two, two to be precise. I think in their petition they might um, have mentioned the type of district that it might be uh, appropriate for. And again, um, you know, without having any regu regulations to react to, we don't know, number one, do, do we want to do it? Number two, if, if we want to do it or we have to do it, uh, at what level are we going to be mandated, you know, how many dispensaries would we be, uh, be required to have, much like uh, the regulation of alcohol. The state many times says, you know, this is how many you should have or will have or can't, you can't have any more than this. So without really having any regulations or rules to follow, we wouldn't really know how to draft anything appropriately. And so from my perspective, other than tracking it, which our attorney's firm is doing and, and, and uh, trying to stay educated on the issue, uh, I think we really need to have further, you know, further definition from the uh, state to know how to even begin to see how we would address it. Okay. And I just jump in to add without um, reviewing or providing an opinion on any part of this, just glancing at this proposed ordinance, which I'll note again is not a petition because there's, I mean, it's not signed, so it's not actually before you, but right. um, to the extent that it would allow provisioning centers, that is not legal under the current law. So something would have to change to even allow the city to entertain that possibility. Okay. John, as I read this, they're not asking for an election or a referendum. It's just asking us to do it. I mean, if we get a petition, do we have to take any action on it? Well, I think what the, Laura's saying is under that the they charter? do file it, they would be filing a petition for an illegal action. And but, but let's say it was, let's say they were legalized. I mean, do, at what point do we have to take action under the city charter when we get a petition? Sure, under the city charter, if you have a petition and if it did provide for something lawful, so if it were because the law changed, we're somewhere down the road, then it's either approved by the city or it goes to an election. The city can send it to the voters. But if it's an illegal act, we're not going to, you know, let them sue us, okay? Uh, you could come up with a lot of ordinance ideas that are blatantly illegal that we're not going to put on a ballot for our public to vote on. How many signatures do they have to have? To I believe it's 15%. I have the charter here. I think it's 15% of the... Uh, voters, but let me confirm that. 1,500. One other question is, if it's recreational, the laws pass recreational, <clears throat> does that encompass the dispensaries also? Or how would uh, sale of marijuana be handled? If, uh, I, I'm not aware of any bills pending to legalize recreational use. It's more conceptual possibility down the road. And we don't know what it would say or what impact it would have or what control it would give local governments or what control it would you know, put in the state where you wouldn't get a, a say. Uh, and just to bounce back, uh, an initiatory or referendum petition shall be signed by registered electors of the city, not less in number than 15% of the registered electors as of the date of the last city election. So for them to put this before the city, they've got to get 15% of the registered voters. 
And again, certainly we could cross the bridge of it actually getting to the city, but um, you know, if somebody came up, you know, I don't, I'm not even going to give an example because I don't want to compare medical marijuana to something, you know, atrocious or anything like that. But you can imagine other illegal things that somebody could put an ordinance to bring to the city, and it doesn't mean that the city can make it law. Um, because if you have an ordinance, even if you did, if they said dispensaries, here's our dispensary ordinance, go ahead and approve it, and you said, okay, you know, 20% of the voters want it, we'll do it. If it's in conflict with state law, it's not valid. It's preempted. It has no force in effect. It will be thrown out. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions for Laura this evening, then, on this? Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Table items or none. Any board member comments this evening? Now we're going to have to go through the whole rigmarole we did before. I mean, meeting after meeting after meeting about legalized marijuana, if this should become an issue. I'm sorry, sorry. I just took a chocolate of all. Potter with her heart. Yeah. <laughs> Very good chocolate. Have you ever heard a lawyer that wouldn't speak? <laughs> Give him chocolate, I got him chocolate. <laughs> we've, we've discovered the, the way to stop. I apologize. If you give them to Mike, though, um, you know, I don't know if they'll have the same effect. But, um, I'll throw them at him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if it got to a point where you wanted to regulate it, would it require a lot of meetings? Is that... So the, they were here, what, two years ago? Uh, I think longer than that, in all honesty, but it, yeah. It was up until the, exactly what you said. The state doesn't allow it. It was a moot point at that time. We stopped but. Man, they must have been at five, six, seven, eight different meetings to, to actually educate us on, you know, mm -hmm. mer mer medical marijuana and stuff like that. And then it just stopped because they said it's not going to happen. So, but it was quite involved. Um, you know, I, I guess it's if there's nothing actually before the commission, if they just have public comment period, then um, you can legally, you, you have to give everybody public comment, mm -hmm. but you don't have to give everybody half an hour of public comment. So right. um, if there's nothing pending before the commission and it's not on your agenda and people come to a regular meeting, give them their public comment time that everyone's entitled to and certainly don't cut them off or anything, but that would be the, their opportunity to present that information. Okay, thank you. And, and actually more at that time, Kevin, it was, it was educating everybody. That's what I'm saying. They, so, it, was, it was a, a very extensive... Uh, yeah. I mean, they did a nice job. Yeah. It was to the point where if it would have been legal, I think everybody on the board would have would have said yes, mm -hmm. just to the point of where to locate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John, a question on the Terry D property. Will they or will they have got their MDOT approvals prior to the public hearing? Not prior to the public <coughs> hearing, not to my knowledge. Uh, but I think they probably would have to have some kind of approval by the time they would want to have their first development be approved and start creating access off of M55. Uh, and, and it might be that MDOT stages their approvals. I'm not sure I, I need to have another conversation with the MDOT folks. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jim, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, they've asked for some kind of study on the, on the project. We're in the process of doing a traffic study right now for MDOT. Uh, we've submitted what we proposed, and then we've got to do a traffic study to get the approval on that. We have because submitted our, our water and sewer uh, for permits, and, uh, and approving a site plan without knowing where the access is going to be could be a little... Well, I... I haven't seen it, but I'm just... Yeah, I, and when you met with them, it was probably more a case of what the lane structure would be. It wasn't location of the drives, right? They didn't. So I think what they're showing in the sketch plan will be where it is. It's a question of how it might be modified and whether there needs to be any kind of deceleration tapers or acceleration tapers or extra lanes or any of these things or whether they're going to set warrants for when traffic gets to a certain level, certain things have to be built into the project. So uh, it will be up to them to see the pace and the phasing of the project and then based on the traffic generation by each phase, they'll decide at what point different things have to, have to happen with respect to the access. It would be helpful probably to have something from MDOT 
here at the meeting that could kind of, because there's bound to be some questions where that is going to go in or out at would make a difference to the residents across the road, I'm sure. Okay. I'll check with them. Yeah. Good point. <coughs> Any other uh, board member questions or comments this evening? Snowfest, obviously, this weekend, chili cook-off, mm -hmm. all that stuff tomorrow night. Uh, lots of things will not be on the lake. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but we don't want to have situations like Houghton Lake, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about the fact that we left all those lights up so we could turn them back on, all the Christmas lights on, or up, so we could turn them back on during the snowfest. Uh, so now it's not even going to be here. Uh, no. <laughs> so. no. Oh, well. I read that. Okay. But again, at least we still have some snow, and <clears throat> this stuff's got a base to it. Yeah. And we don't yeah. want any trucks in the lake. Oh, good gosh, no. 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 Not like they did. Okay. Uh, communications. I don't know. Marijuana attachments as agenda, sir. But we yeah, cover that. Yeah, there, there's not been any other. Like I said, all they had that was just some definitions that they were trying to add to stuff. That was all. Okay. Uh, ready? Any any public comments this evening? I was just going to say, if you have any other comments, uh, Dave or, or anybody else, or helpful for the meeting, you know, pass them on to John. We'll, you know, I've written it down. We're going to contact M. Dot and see what we can do. And if you. Uh, Mm -hmm. We can get a get a heads up on, on what the issue is. We right. Can, we can get a cover right. and that. So yeah. more than happy to do that. Yeah. At least if they would say it's okay to put it in in that sure. spot, it would be. Yeah, that'd be the you know that's that's the the low uh, denominator. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like that. Yeah. We can get a representative here. If we could get Rick Liptek here. Oh or yeah. Or somebody yeah. like that. That right. that would be. You know, that'd be great, but I'm not going to promise that either. But. Right, it just puts a lot of, of questions. It just puts an arrest. Yeah, there exactly. Start out on a good foundation. Well, and we wouldn't have to wait until the next meeting until yeah. we get those answers. We would actually have them here yeah. as part of the discussion, and that would be really, yeah. um, I think it would be really helpful for the community members that are going to be sitting in the room. Yeah. We'll do our best. Along with us. And they'll be here. We'll they will be here. Who, yeah. who represents that area? Whose precinct is that? Um, I'm Dot. No, no, I'm talking city council. It would be uh, Matt Wolfile. It'd be nice to have him here, too. Okay. When yeah. her, the reason I'm asking that is, is he has to hear what the constituents are yeah. in the area. I'm sure that uh, he and Bill Keith will probably want to come to those meetings because they're going to want to learn about what's going on. Yeah, so I'll saying. invite them. I, in fact, I'll invite all the council members <laughs> because this is a huge project. Uh -huh. yeah. It is. Yes, yes, it is. I will do that. Wonderful. So hopefully that'll be a very <coughs> constructive public hearing. Any other public comments this evening? No. Okay. No other business and stuff and stuff. We are out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That's almost.